Hello and welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial, we're gonna learn more about components. So now, what is a component? A component is the building block of any Angular application. So now, when we say a component, it contains some functionality and some code that you want to, you want to be represented as a separate page. Okay. Now, in the first uh, tutorial of this tutorial or this playlist, you can refer to to see how you can work with the component definition. To define a component, you need to go to the app folder inside the client app folder. You need to expand the components folder and also add your folder right here okay inside it you need to have two files the html and the typescript file also you will need to reference your component inside the shared file right here then after you reference your component you need to add it to the declaration right here then you will need to specify a route for it the route is the url that you will be able to navigate through it to the component so now to add a new component in visual studio again you can just simply hit right click add new item and just select a TypeScript file make sure it has the TS extension on it and after you added it it's need to import the component from the angular core package and then you will need to define the add component directive you will also need to expose or export a class that represent that component so now after we have defined our component you have some settings that you can control through it the component definition the first setting is the template URL now when we say template URL we refer to the view file that we want it to contain our own HTML in this component right here this is our own view file and as you notice it is inside the same folder you can for sure have it in another folder but it's not recommended now after you have specified your template url you can run your application or your component and you will see the output in the screen now also you can define static HTML for your component you can call in the template now right here inside the template you will have to specify your HTML now just be careful because using a static HTML inside the typescript file can be causing a lot of problems now we also have the selector property now when we say a selector property it represent the HTML tag that we can reference through it our own component 
via the selector you will be able to call your component anywhere you want in your application so if I want to call this component I can take its selector and place it as an HTML tag and it will be referenced now we can also set the styles property for our component now the styles property will contain all the CSS classes or the CSS code that we want to define it is up to you to define like how you want that CSS to be defined and you need to be careful because this is a static style and you might not want that to be inside your component to define a CSS style file or reference a CSS style file you can use the style URL's property inside the styles URL property you will be able to reference your CSS file now we are going to add a new CSS file now we have referenced our own css style file now what we want to do we wanna run the application and see the output of this component after we have referenced it or like used it inside our own application now remember that inside the description of this video you can go to the github repository for this project and reference or see the code used in this tutorial so now our application have loaded successfully and just a reminder that we have wrongfully placed the combo css in the wrong folder so i've just moved it now if I head over here notice that my h1 is now colored because I am referencing the combo.css file now I can also add more style and as you notice I have my styles right here and every like H2 now is colored blue so most of your time you will be working inside a component file and there you will write your application logic and page logic now we wanna look more into how we can hook up to the lifecycle events of components now we are going to head over to the component typescript file now we're gonna start with the first event which is on init now 
To call on init inside your component, you need to call ng on init. Now we're gonna place right here just a reference to the console so we can see that this method is called. Now we can also reference the other events which are the ng in destroy which will occur when we navigate away from the component and it will be destroyed and also ng after view in it which will be happening after we load our own html file so let's see these two we will need to reference ng on destroy and we're gonna need to reference after view in it now notice that I start each one with ng small letter Now, when we run our own application, it will hook up to these events and we're gonna see it in the console. So let's run our own application to see the output. So now, our application is running now. So I will expand this and show you the console. Now I will go to my component. And notice that I have the in on it called and after it I have the after view in it called so on in it will be called first then the after view on in it now if I navigate away from this component the ng in destroyed will be called as you notice in the console now I would like to add a breakpoint actually and try to get the components actions so it seems that my debugger is not hooked up for some reason but from the console as you notice on init will be first after view on init will be called then navigating away will be calling ng on destroy so now we have left with the component reference now if you want other components to be referenced or like you reuse the html like the login html or the user area html to be reused in different pages in your application you can simply reference any component you want by calling its selector as an html tag now what i want to do i want to reference the data binding component inside my component right here so to do that the data binding selector is this so i will copy this i will hit over right here and just simply you need to add data binding Now notice with me that I have the data binding component inherited right here the same one you see here 
is now referenced here now let's inspect the HTML and as you can see it's like an HTML element inside my other component which is referenced so this is our own tutorial for today I hope you enjoy it and please subscribe to our channel and make sure you go to tutorialsexcel.com so you can get the latest update. Thank you for watching.